As we know, a person can easily run at top speed through normal air, but he cannot do the same in a much thicker medium like water. If he were to be pushed at the same speeds in the thicker fluid, he would probably lose his arms and legs due to the excessive resistance he encounters. The same thing can happen to airplanes if they are pushed beyond their design structural limits. At 30,000 feet, the air is very thin, and the airplane can easily travel beyond 500 miles an hour without encountering much resistance. As soon as it starts descending, however, the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker, and the plane needs to reduce the speed accordingly in order to preserve its structural integrity. Below 10,000 feet in altitude, speeds around 250 miles per hour are recommended. In fact, each airplane has a specific maximum operating velocity, called VMO, which should never be exceeded at low altitudes. Never means never for a reason. Should the VMO be exceeded, a phenomenon called flutter can occur, which can quickly cause irreversible damage. The flutter phenomenon can affect any kind of airplane, from large military bombers to small single-engine airplanes. Once the VMO is exceeded, not only are the wings and the ailerons at risk, but also the fuselage begins suffering from the air pressure caused by the speed. This is what happened to an Air China 747, which exceeded the maximum operating speed, or VMO, in the desperate effort to recover from an engine failure. For the first time, Captain Ho takes manual control of the plane. Airspeed 270, 280. The plane is about to exceed its maximum speed. Approaching VMO. The stress of the dive tears the landing gear doors off the plane. VMO, emergency. Emergency. Luckily, the pilots were able to regain control of the plane and perform an emergency landing. The damage caused by the excess velocity was visible all over the plane. The maximum operating speed for a 767, two of the four hijacked airplanes, is 414 miles per hour. For the other two airplanes, the 757s, the VMO is even less, 402 miles per hour. Yet on 9-11, all four airplanes were flown at speeds close to or beyond 500 miles per hour near sea level without suffering any visible structural damage, while remaining perfectly under control all the way into their targets. There's a big discussion on the uh, internet about the plane speeds on 9-11. Right. Uh, they said that the plane that hit the second tower was doing about 540 miles an hour I've talked to some people and they said there's no way that it would have been possible to do that speed. My, my personal opinion is no. I agree with you. What somebody was doing was taking the top speed of the airplane at 35,000 feet and saying, okay, well, it goes that fast at sea level, which of course it doesn't, as you, as you pointed out. Okay. Okay. I guess. In the case of a 727 that basically uh, lost control at 35,000 or 37,000 feet and the flight data recorder uh, indicated a speed of Mach 1.1. Uh, on the way down, and uh, which, by the way, they did recover the airplane, but on the way down it exceeded the speed of sound, and so it's possible, but the thing was coming straight down. Okay, straight down, like, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. So it's possible to go any speed at that when you're going straight down, I guess. Oh, yeah, I mean, but that's not, that's not, uh, you know, that's not what you're talking about. I, I have to tend to agree with you that uh, in level flight, uh, 767 would not go 540 miles an hour. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. The limit would be, I don't know, and, you know, for the purpose of arguments, I don't know, but uh, uh, definitely we'll go 400 because the, 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 the indicated limit is about 350 knots, which is about 400 miles an hour. It might go 400, it might go 420, 440, but not 540. No. And not only that, it's more than likely if it did get to 540, uh, it would start uh, shedding some of the parts of the airplane. Oh, it was, it was, it was uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, media, media mis, uh, misinterpretation. I was reading on the internet that you were an aeronautical engineer. Correct. Um, and I was wondering if you could help me out with a question. Uh, is it possible for a commercial airliner like a Boeing 767 to go over 500 miles an hour at sea level? Uh, at sea level, oh, let's see, 500 miles an hour. Let me check here quickly. Uh, I can tell you that. Sounds pretty fast. <laughs> Hmm, because yeah, I've, I've, I've spoken to a few uh, a few uh, engineers and they yeah. they've told me that it wouldn't be possible because of the uh, 
because of the, uh, the the intake of the thickness of the air into the engines, that it wouldn't be able to generate. Well, the, the, thrust. Quite, the question is, oh, yeah, that's true. Whether the engines can handle that. That's more. Yeah, it could be that's an engine engine limitation. If the engines can. It, it would uh, no, you're right. Yeah, the engines are probably not be able to generate that much thrust at uh, at sea level. Yeah, as one guy told me, it would it would need to generate six yeah. times the amount of thrust. Yeah, because from uh, well. Yeah, it, well, it will be a draggy. You know, it, it's it's pretty draggy airplane at that at that point. Uh, that's true, but uh, uh, one person told me it might even start to shake apart because of the resonance. Well, that's more a, a Mach limitation, Mach number limitation, really. And the Mach number is not that bad actually at uh, at 500 miles an hour on sea level. So, uh, but it's more matter. Yeah, can the angel handle? Handle that. Probably not. Probably can't. No. Eh? Handle that. Yeah. So why you trying to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um. Actually, uh, I've been in a big uh, debate with some people. Mm -hmm. It seems that the people that know what they're talking about says it would be impossible to do, and the people that don't know what they're talking about says it's possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it, it all depends. I don't know what the engine uh, can handle, so that's that's it's more uh, whether the engine can handle that high, uh, high, uh, really a Mach number at this density. Uh, and I don't know if, like, even even if you were able to attain that speed at sea level, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't be able to really maneuver the plane, would you? Like, do a sharp left bank or something like that? No. But even then, you know, it would be, uh, you would do it at altitude too, you know, not sharp banks, but you, you can, because you know what's important is really the Mach number, and the Mach number is not that bad, you know, it's a little 0.7, mm -hmm. so, uh, so uh, 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 yeah, I, let me think about it for a second here, yeah, um, Trying to think what the engine would do. Yes, let me see. Uh, I look just the Mach number is not bad. It's 0.66, really, at that at sea level. So 0.66. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the engines can handle it. That's that's a good question. Can I maybe tell you what I'm getting at here? Uh, I hope you don't take offense to it. Uh -huh. um, the planes on 9-11? Right. Okay, the second one, flight 175, that hit the second tower, they said it was going at uh, roughly 560 miles an hour at sea level. No, that's impossible. Like 100% impossible. Yes, again, you, you need so much power to push yourself through that air, through that density of air. Now, uh, the Pentagon, well, well, New York's obviously at sea level, and the Pentagon, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd assume it's you know, not all that much higher. You've got an aircraft that's optimized, so the engines have the right amount of horsepower for cruising at 30,000 feet at you know, 500 plus miles an hour. To do that at ground level, you need six times that amount of power. Those engines can't put out six times more power, so it cannot. Absolutely not. If you uh, changed up the mortars so they had, were mortars that had six times the thrust, then, you know, theoretically you could, but then the structure is not strong enough. So, no. Under under all circumstances, I'd say an absolute resounding no. Yeah, hi, it's Gordon Wilson calling from Vancouver. How are you? Oh, hi, good, sir. Thank you uh, very much for calling me back. Um, I was hoping you could uh, help me out with a quick question that I had for you. Sure. I noticed you're uh, familiar with aeronautical engineering and everything. I was uh, wondering, I was talking with some people and we were discussing uh, plane speeds. Yes. And uh, we were uh, talking about how if a Boeing 767, at cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, it flies at 530 miles an hour. Uh, is it possible to, for it to fly over 500 miles an hour at sea level? Uh, no. Like, that's like, uh, absolutely not? 
No. Yeah, it, it would be above the indicated uh, airspeed would be uh, greater than at uh, its maximum speed at sea level. Yeah, because I had uh, I had talked to a few people. They said it wouldn't be because uh, the air is three times as thicker. It is exactly. And it would it would need to generate like say six times more thrust or something with the engine. Yeah, exactly. There's there's drag involved here. It's it's also the ind indicated versus true. As you get to altitude, indicated is approximately half the amount of true speed. Mm -hmm. Because if you think of the molecules of air, they're, they're further apart. So to, to get the same indicated airspeed, you've got to be going twice as fast to collect the same amount of molecules of air. In other words, if you're doing 200 knots uh, on, at uh, sea level, at 200 knots you're collecting, we'll just say, say 200 molecules of air which are spaced equally apart, right? Mm -hmm. well, when you're at altitude, when you're doing 200 knots, you're actually going twice as fast. Your true airspeed is 400 because the molecules of air are further apart because it's less dense. You've got to catch the same number of molecules to give you the indicated airspeed. Okay, so it would it would be impossible for a Boeing 767 to go over 500 miles an hour at sea level then? Yeah. Um, even, like say if it was even in a, like a shallow type of dive, would it be able to? Any, any airplane can be dive, of course, then you've got the assistance of gravity, right? Yeah, I'd Pointed see. straight at the earth, but there, there, there comes a point where the, the, the drag of the air overcomes the aerodynamics of the airplane. Okay, so it wouldn't be able to even in a shallow dive, per se. Now, using the word shallow, if you pointed it down, yes, you can get the speed, and that is one of the problems with uh, uh, jet airplanes at high altitudes. When you start down, you've got to be very careful that you don't exceed the maximum speed, and they do have uh, what we call a, a mock indicator, which will give you um, a noise to indicate that you're exceeding the maximum mock for the airplane.